Boom, you are live, back with the crew. Good morning, guys. We have interesting days here, don't we? Today's video, I'm just going to bounce around about a bunch of different subjects about what's really going on way above the clouds, if you will. I was supposed to have a discussion or three today with a couple of bankers uh, that I know pretty well, and uh, both of them... Both of them were like busy, <laughs> as you can kind of imagine. They're like, "Go away, Mr. Allen guy, you're annoying me." Uh, like, no, they were like that. They were really cool about it. They, but they were like, and one guy's retired, and his phone is just gone. He's just like, his voice. He said his voice is history, and he's just. Well, let me tell you through text chat with them and through what I've put together. And, um, you know, like many people in the show don't know, but like I understand global banking to a level because of the people I've known and the people I've, the questions I've asked over the last 30 years to these people. I understand how that game is played. So let me try and do a, you know, above the clouds looking down on what's happening in the world today. And I hope you guys get something from this because this is really fundamentally what's happening right now. And it's so important to know the fundamentals, okay? And towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what we're really going to be happy about in the end. Um, what essentially happened, what they do, and we've talked about this a million times. Sorry, I'm, it's pouring rain and I'm in the garb and I'm shaking the camera all over the place. <laughs> we... What they do on a global scale is they blow bubbles. That's what they do. Um, they, they blow real estate bubbles. They blow them in China, in Australia, in Canada, in the U.S., everywhere. And it, it, it takes liquidity and equity and debt and that employs people and that creates booms and it creates bubbles and that's really what they're trying to do when when they move global money around okay and they prosper from this greatly as you can imagine okay but they also profit when it busts okay because they know the bust is kind of coming right many of the big players know what's happening right now is Everybody, like I said in the last video, people were looking for yield. All the medium-sized little banks were looking for yield. They couldn't find any yield. There was no yield to be had. And now they have this high-quality, AAA, beautiful debt in which they never get their hands on. Okay? I'm talking medium, good-sized medium banks. The top, you know, 80 banks. Not the top 10 or 20, but, you know, 20 to, to 100 they finally got this beautiful righteous paper that they never get their hands on this AAA stuff and they did and it was absolutely the worst time to grab that paper and you can say okay well they blew bubbles in tech in in 99 they blew they blew real estate bubbles in 08 they blew you know wall street bubbles numerous times this time they blew a bubble and they sold it to the medium and small, smaller banks of North America and globally. And in my opinion, they did it intentionally. And do I think that's going to end well for most of those medium-sized banks? No, I do not. Yes, I am concerned. And yes, if you have a small branch, you should maybe open another account. And I, it's... I'm, one of the reasons why I'm on here talking about this right now is because I'm hearing all these people, you should, you should go to a credit union. Oh, they're safer and it's better. That's questionable. And it's questionable because two, two big reasons. And the biggest reason is, who's their liquidity provider? And where are their equities? How leveraged are they? I know they're supposed to be able to tell you those documents because you are a member of their their team you are actually an account holder you you're you're not just a depositor you are part of a union 
part of the group. It's all about global liquidity. It's way above the credit union's head. I'm not trying to say that you should... I have a credit union account. Okay. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't. I'm trying to say you should diversify. And you should really diversify with not only with your cryptos, with your cash, with your gold, with your land, with everything, all assets. Because all assets, like I started the video, they create these bubbles, asset bubbles, and they pop them. And they create them and pop them and create them and pop them. Well, right now, there's a group at the top, and I talk about this all the time, about a war that's going on at the top. Okay, and I'm just going to call them the the team that's losing right now the most is the WEF. I know many of you think those people are the guys in charge. They're not. Number one, they're not. Number two, they're freaks. <laughs> I know people that despise those people and have despised those people for 30 and 40 years who run economic systems around the world. Those people do not represent all the wealth and all the power of the world. They're a small sanction. And they're being exposed. And they look ridiculous. And these ridiculous little wars and, and decisions in which... I got one for you. Listen, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but this is amazing stuff. One of the many countries, dozens now, dozens and dozens of countries now, are wanting to join the BRICS. You know who one of them is? Mexico. Do you know how serious they are? Very. Why? Because they're tired of dealing with a com country that is always breaking treaties, never holding up their part of the bargain, always accusing them of being the problem, always taking advantage of, of their labor of their people and the assets of their country. And this is a pattern that's been being exposed globally because of people like the people I was just talking about who run the WEF. These people are... They exploit things. That's what they do. They like to blow bubbles, exploit people, exploit labor all around the world. Man, I wish I could really talk. <laughs> I swear, I'm good. I've been working in the background about starting another channel, and uh, I'll get to that later in some other video, maybe, or at the end of this one, who knows. That country is Mexico. Can you imagine that Mexico wants to join the BRICS? And you know what the people in our Senate say about that? And the Congress say about that? Look up their comments. Well, we're going to have to send troops down there. Oh, we're going to send troops to fight the, the drug cartels. You haven't cared about their drug cartels in 30 years. Now, all of a sudden, that they want to go with the BRICS, you're going to send military force into Mexico? These are the decisions in which I'm talking about that people around the world don't like. Dude, that doesn't make sense to anybody anyone okay except for the people in the world economic forum who think that you can solve the whole world's problems with a solar panel today i'm sorry that's it's not what the rest of the world thinks and although they have some really good ideas and they really do in some ways control a lot of things they're losing and they're losing big. And that war that I've been talking about since I started this channel a year and a half ago is becoming obvious. It's becoming obvious through the banking system. It's becoming obvious through their military decisions. It's becoming obvious through, uh, I'm, I'm going to get in a fight with my neighbor country. This is, this is unacceptable. And it's time we all sort of woke up and said, wait a minute, man. What? Whoa. Whoa, whoa. No, no. See, you, you don't understand. You're not representing the people here. 
We need to feed people. We need people to have food, shelter, electricity, water. That's what you guys need to really focus on. You need to get on with that. I'm not trying to be too political here. I'm just trying to say that this whole banking cartel, this group, is one sanction. Now, I hear a lot of people give me a hard time because I believe in Bitcoin. I believe in Ethereum. And oh my God. Alan, that's an, the army hates that. Well, I have news for you about a few things. The WEF is getting their butts kicked, okay? Big time. Big time. And you know who supports that? That's right. The ISO is supported by the WEF. All of those coins. What I'm trying to say is you need to diversify when you were investing in anything or everything because there's more than one team and more than one outcome. One of my favorite stories. This is great stuff. This is logic. This is logical 101 with, and when it comes to investing. Do you know what team has won every Super Bowl in the history of all Super Bowls? The team of owners. <laughs> That's right. Even the worst team shares in the owner of the worst team in the league shares in the profits of the Super Bowl income. They all won that day. You know who lost? All the people that picked a side. All the people that picked a side on either side. I don't even... Was it Kansas City and wherever the heck it was. I don't even know. I can't remember. Um, Philadelphia, sorry. So, like, who picks the sides? You can lose. You can be a loser really easily. If you're picking one team and you're saying the other team is the problem with the world and I'm never investing in the other side, you're making a fundamental mistake that billionaires don't make. You're making a fundamental mistake because you're deciding the winner and loser. And if you start doing that, you're going to be 50% wrong in a lot of your investments. Do I think the ISO tokens are a great investment? I do. Do I think that team is going to go away tomorrow? No, I do not. But I do think that they are getting exposed in many ways. And there are many nations that don't want to play with that group of people. And they could really cut their nose off despite their face. They could lose the big battle in the end. Will the railroad tracks, will many digits around the world be run on XRP in those, that, those tracks? Of course. Will it be the number one winner take all? No, that's impossible. I've been telling you that for a very long time. Okay. I know that upsets the army a lot, and I, I, it's, it's okay, because if you believe that, good for you. I'm happy for you. But buy more than one coin. That's all I got to say about that. Now I'm off track again. But there were so many comments in the last video about me talking. Every time I mention Bitcoin, everybody gets wound up. Man, it's crazy. I... Anyway, the banking system is collapsing at the lower level right now. I'm not telling you to panic and run out and close your account. That's not why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because the big cat, fat cats, have been circling the wagons of the little banks for a very long time. They want them. Just like they want control of the on-ramps and off-ramps of cryptocurrencies, which is what they're controlling now. They are beating these banks away who are part of the crypto exchanges. They are consuming them. They are big fish eating all the little fish. And now they're getting federal, the, not federal because they're not federal, but they're getting the Fed to pay for it. Think about that. These big banks are crushing these banking systems that cr support and create crypto companies. And the Fed's helping them obtain these companies. This is a big game that's being played right now. Thankfully, those companies, okay, almost all crypto companies, the wise ones, like I talk about all the time, Divi, Nick moved to Dubai. 
Why did he move to Dubai? Hello? Why is Ripple moving out of the United States? They've been talking about it for six, eight months now, and now they're doing it. Why? Because they don't want to be manipulated by Wall Street. Wall Street manipulates everything. So now the opportunity of a lifetime is now where? Dubai. Okay? Banking-wise for crypto. Where else? Thank God we have Dubai. Thank God. Thank God we have Singapore. Thank God we have all these other countries that are open. South Korea. We have... Um, I'm really missing a big one right now, but anyway, it'll come to me. We have these other apps. Hong Kong, opening up to crypto exchanges, banking. We have other avenues. And the U.S., again, I'm going to say that name again, the WEF is shooting themselves in the foot because they want to control everything. When you try and control everything, and you used to be able to control everything, and you can't any longer, you look like this big fool. And you make a lot of mistakes. And they're constantly making bigger and bigger and bigger mistakes. And what they're trying to do by controlling crypto through their Wall Street... Let's get back to Wall Street. What does Wall Street control? Virtually everything. I know. You don't see Wall Street that way. I know big players in that game. Think about this. They control the pharmaceutical industry, technology, oil. I mean, I already mentioned big pharma. Um, military industrial complex. All of that, housing, real estate, insurance corporations, all of that is under that roof. All of that is controlled with the printing of money and picking winners and losers. And that system is being exposed. Their foolishness and their corruption and their control of trying to fix every game in town is being exposed. This is big. And it's happening now. It's a slow mudslide, like I talk about all the time. It's going to take some time for this to occur. Every time I talk to this about so many other people, you know, that we talk about on the show, their eyes just glaze over. I know that most of you get what I'm saying here. The different perspective that I like to offer on this show is I like to step back and look at the whole globe. Because it's really important for us to understand that. We get caught up in our token or our system. And oh, it's okay, you know, our, my coin can fix the world's problems. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe in 20 years. But the stinky old global system is self-destructing on its own. You don't have to be the cheerleader to, you know, fight City Hall today. City Hall is self-destructing. And it's happening quick. Like I say, the quickening. Things are happening faster and faster and faster. And the people of prosperity need to step back and find out where the chips fall. Instead of picking a side and only picking one side, you need to step back. Stay flexible Take care of yourself, take care of your family, and do the best you can to be a great human being. And all of it's going to work out. Do you know everybody I'm talking to on this channel? Okay, this is my favorite part of the whole video. <laughs> everybody I'm talking to on this channel, their eyes aren't gla glazing over in their head. Because <clears throat> they see where it's going. You know where this is headed. You don't know how it's going to get there. But you know it's going to end up somewhere. That's the beauty of who this group is. And dozens of other channels. We know what Wall Street knows. There's a big bubble in crypto coming. And you're going to be prosperous. You're going to be the future wealthy of this planet. Because you know that. <laughs> you... You already own the coins. You probably already own more coins than you need. 
and it it might even they might even go down and get cheaper for you but don't over leverage yourself man you know, make sure you take care of yourself and your fan family as best you can but you are are the new wealthy and I've been wanting to talk about this subject for so long and I talk about I talk about the wealthy because I work with them. That's what I do for a living. And I know who they are. And I know they're just simple people, most of them. Okay? I know they are. But one day you're going to be that guy. You're going to be the person in your community that has tens of millions of dollars. And yes, I do believe the dollar will be around still. I know. Put your little comments down about it. You're out of your mind. You're crazy. Yeah, well, the British pound didn't go away. I'm just saying, you're the new wealthy. I don't know when, but it's coming. And it's, it's coming, and it's so obvious to me. The stock market, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's already done its thing. Remember, they like to blow bubbles. They're going to blow a bubble with the stock market. They're going to blow a bubble with crypto. They're going to blow a bubble. Where else are they going to blow bubbles? It's what they're going to do. It's what they always do. They're crashing real estate right now so they can blow another real estate bubble. It's fun days, guys. It's good times. And I know, I know, it's scary out there. But do your best not to fear. And do your best not to hate another coin or another country or another government or your own government. They're making mistakes. This, this is working. I know it's a weird way it's evolving, but it's evolving into you holding the right cards. I mean, the world should have been in turmoil the last couple of days and cryptos went up. That just tells you that it, you're in the right place. Can they go down, of course? Now I'm repeating myself. This whole economic system is evolving. And it's evolving into the future that you and I already know where it's going. It's going blockchain. It's going technology. And you and I know that. And their archaic system is looking really Stone Age right now. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to control the liquidity. All these big banks want to own all these medium-sized medium banks because the medium-sized banks issue debt and they issue stuff that they can't control and they issue coins and they issue liquidity to coins and they want to be able to control that. That's why they haven't allowed an ETF. That's why Greystone, Grayscale is suing them and winning. They're beating the SEC because they're trying to control it because Wall Street controls everything, all the categories in which I just went over. And that's what they want to do again. And they will do it. They will do it to some degree. Thankfully, again, we have other nations in which to generate, create liquidity for upstart crypto companies and crypto banking networks. And with that, guys, you are in the right place. Stay tuned. I love you guys. I really enjoy bringing this content to you. I hope you guys get stuff from it. We are in this together, and we have a very, very bright future. The future of the world is not going down. The Western world is in decline, or level. I'll even say just level. It's just that the rest of the world is growing, and in, on the increase, and they're, they're crushing it, and they're doing well. So hang in there. They're going to they're going to take us along again like China's prosperity in the last decade or two has helped the US help to help the western worlds. So we're all going to prosper. There could be moments of bad times in 6 months at a time or something like that of course, but don't focus on the negative and the fear. You just create more fear by focusing upon it in your life. Anyway, my two cents with that guys, I am out. So I have this chat with this lady the other day who watches the show and she says, you know, 
That's kind of lame. That little thing you do at the end. It's just kind of... I don't know, it's kind of childish, isn't it? I mean, you provide such a great information base for all the people that really appreciate your work. And then it's... You give the, the end of your video on this lame old man joke stuff. It's, it's, I don't know, I think it's kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably stop doing that one day soon. Yeah. I walked away thinking, lighten up, lady. Just lighten up a little bit. You know, relax. Have a laugh. Enjoy life a little. I'm stopping this. I ain't 